watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. My name is Erin Micklow, and I'm here at the Belasco in downtown LA with Crazy in the Brains. Introduce yourselves. Ernest Young, I play guitar. Rob Mellinger, I play bass. Zach Pless, I play drums. Ali Presses, I play keys. My name is Christoph Jesus. I <laughs> sing and write the music. <laughs> Yay! So everybody here is new, except for you, Ernest, and obviously you, Chris. Can we, can we talk about this? What happened? Uh, yes, everyone is new. Everyone is awesome. Uh, we uh, had a bunch of li lineup changes. Um, yeah, we went on a six week tour. And uh, when we came back, the crew that we were rolling with decided that uh, they couldn't do it anymore. So, um, you know, we had to find new people. And uh, it's, it's really been a blessing. Because uh, meeting with Ali and Rob and Zach, you've been there for quite a bit already. But uh has been great, you know? And this band has always been like an evolution from day one, you know? The band started with me on guitar alone. I met up with my, my homeboy at the time, Jeff. We started, you know, incorporating xylophone, drums, bass came over the years, and then the sound just continued to evolve over time. And we met Ali. Ali's a phenomenal keyboard player. And uh, it really was just like, divine timing you know everything just kind of came together in this organic way um you know like this lifestyle is definitely a choice you know and it's and there's sacrifices to be made and it's not it's not always easy but i think when you when you retain that appreciation and that gratefulness for this lifestyle you, you know it, all the hardships are worth it and for, i know for all of us here that's definitely the case so i'm really happy beyond happy with 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 how things evolved you know and uh yeah i love ali rob zach i love you and you're all very handsome uh, i'd like to dedicate this song to my father who passed away almost a year ago he was the greatest supporter of this band in all things punk rock and this song goes out to him yes one of the lines in this song is listen to the music without the fear. And that's uh words of wisdom my father bestowed upon me. And I hope uh, it can inspire you in some way. The song's called Punk Rock. Thanks for coming out. Peace of love. We'll be hanging out with the first table. As I said, uh, we love it. We love you very much. Well, so that six week tour that you left on, your father actually passed away right before that tour. Yes, yeah. And mm -hmm. you made the choice to go on the tour mm -hmm. anyway. Can you talk about that choice for you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because Ernest was like the only one who, I don't, I don't wanna say had faith in me, but he was the only one who'd never questioned my commitment. Like, yes, my, my father passed away about a week or, or a few days before that tour was ready to take off. And people, you know, people in our crew wasn't, they weren't sure what was gonna happen, but he was telling them, nah, bro, like, prepare like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit the road in a week like and um yeah you know was it hard yeah but like there was no question in, in my heart and my mind that that's where I belonged and I know like that's what my father would want me to do and um you know I I, I thank I thank this family that I have you know like to, to, to that supported me during that time um to be honest, there was there was nothing better for me in that moment than to be on the road performing music, you know? Obviously, I was in touch with my family every day, and, and, and they gave me their blessing to go on tour, but um, music is therapy for us, you know? As, as corny as that may sound, like, that that it truly is what it, this music and this lifestyle is for all of us. So. Yeah. Well, everybody grieves in different ways, too. I mean... Mm -hmm you know, there's people that will crumble and be sad about it. And that's, that's fine. That's a valid way to, to process grief. And then right. other people, their way of processing grief is like needing to take action and do something. So it feels like it means something to Absolutely. honor, to honor that person because you were really close with your dad. Oh yeah. He, he was, and, and, and still is, you know, 
a, a major supporter of this band and 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 uh and i i, th I th i'm just so grateful every day that that i had that support in my life because i know a lot of people don't have that you know and i meet a lot of people on the road who, who who never had that you know like fans and 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 just people in the business who, who who just who'd never had a father at all or never had a support system so like music really is such a powerful um force in people's lives and and i'm so grateful to be here you know and i'm grateful to have had the support that i had to be able to have the strength to do this yeah Well, and then Ernest, how how was that for you being on that tour? I mean, you know, obviously the other members of the band that were on that tour are no longer here. How was that for you? Do you feel like it brought you guys closer together? Because obviously you're still here. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we hung out a lot, and like we, we spent a lot of time together. And we, you know, I love Chris's dad. He was an amazing person, and so like we helped pro helped him process that a little bit. Um, and those guys didn't, they just weren't around. They, you know, in hindsight, they just weren't that interested in being out there. And it made total sense that they left. Yeah. And that's fine. Cause the new players that we got are like rad, awesome people. And we're badasses on stage now. <laughs> um, yes. We've played probably like 60 shows with the new lineup now. Um, so it's, it's easy. It's great. Life's awesome. The, band, <laughs> the band's in a great spot. Well, I like that too. I mean, you know, back to that, that everyone processes grief differently. You know, some people just don't know how to handle someone grieving. So their way is to kind yeah. of, you know, disassociate. And it's yeah. always sad when that happens because, you know, like you and I have talked about in private, it's like, well, you know, it kind of, it, moving forward, it tells you who should be in your life, who has a place in your life and who doesn't. And that's fine. Everybody, you know, sometimes stuff's not meant to last forever. Oh, yeah. All uh, right. This band has always been about evolution from day one. Yeah. So like stylistically, artistically, like this makes perfect sense. You know, like there was a reason that certain people tagged out and new people were tagged in, you know, and like as friends and as collaborators, we all click so well. And I think this was like the perfect timing for this, you know, and uh, yeah, like to your point, you know, everyone does process grief differently, you know, and that's why we have a lot of songs that touch on that, you know, and, and, um, for me, and I think for a lot of us, music is that vessel, like art is that vessel. That's how we get those feelings out. Um, that we, that's the best way that we know how to do it. Yeah. And so at the time that the two of you had done, it was about six months ago, the two of you had done, um, those acoustic sessions are on yeah. YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. was that when you were still figuring out who's the rest of the band and it was just the two of you? Was it? I think you guys, I think, Zach, you yeah, were in the band I was at that definitely point. Definitely in the band at that point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Zach, we were with Zach, but I think we were still figuring things out, you know. Yeah. Um, or we just started. We may I have remember, just started. I think we, we just we started jamming. Maybe. And I think Rob and I both came in like the same yeah. audition. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, <we're laughs> like, same day. Yeah, it was yeah. like the same day. Yeah. 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 And so can you tell the story of how you guys officially came into the band, how you got the audition? Well, I knew Crazy in the Brains from, we played a gig together with my band. Um, and, you know, and it's, you know, Jersey and New York, it's close. It's the, mm -hmm. the scene is, you know, small. Um, and so you reached out to me about playing keys and I was like, yeah, let's jam. I was already a fan of the music. Actually, my cousin and I really liked uh, the first two records a lot. And yeah. so I just was like, let's see how, how it goes. Let's feel it out. And like I said, that was Rob was there and it was just like, oh, this is easy. This is fun, you know, and yeah. it just felt yeah. it just felt really good. And it's funny too because I don't think I I don't think Christoph had like warned me that there was no xylophone player. Yeah. Mm. So I like wrote all my own parts. Yeah. And I just like came in, "Oh, I'm the xylophone player." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then I was like, "Well, I kind of like wrote these like, you know, parts already." And he was like, "Let me just hear them." And 
you know, and then the those rest is history. The yeah, those are now the parts. And yeah. so it's been really fun, really cool. Good yeah. music, you know? Well, and so Open Eyes was the last song you released with a xylophone, that right? Song, yeah. And so obviously that's a huge change in your sound now. Um, but you know, moving forward, you guys were the punk band that had a fucking xylophone player. Like yeah. when I first interviewed you guys, it was like, that was your thing. But yeah. you know, watching another video that you guys did reading mean comments, it is, you know, it was a gimmick for a minute. And I think that it is a good choice moving forward of like a, a change. Not that the xylophone was a bad thing. It, you know, it, it was who you were in the beginning, but you outgrow things, you know, you, you suffered a major loss and it, that uh, like peels a layer of an onion off of who are you now? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not something that we like planned. Um, but it was something that felt right. You know, the music, the music was evolving organically. Yeah. And, uh, this is just where it took us, you know? And, uh, I'm so very happy with it yeah you know, like the way the way music is sound like we're gonna play some new songs tonight some songs that you never heard and i'm stoked to see what you think because it's like the same but also very very different and i think that's that's what i want from a band you know when i'm listening to bands like i love the evolutionary process i don't want to hear the same album every time i think there's maybe one band that was good at that and that was the ramones yeah. Rest in peace, Joey Ramone. Yeah. Ramones are untouchable. Well, but it's hard to do, you know? And I think it's way more interesting and way more exciting when, when bands keep pushing it, you know, and keep and keep trying and keep experimenting. When you were also in that phase of you know searching for new members, I'm sure it's a lot easier to find a keys player than another xylophone. Mm, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> Is that a New York thing? Because it's like you know what? The first time I interviewed you, I had to Google what a xylophone was because I wasn't sure. I'm like, y'all just have a bunch of xylophones over there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like, we 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 auditioned a lot of keyboard players, and no one fit like Allie. Like, yeah, when, of when course. We, when we when we when we met Allie, it was like goodbye. Everyone else is done. Like she was so perfect and like no and you I've said this to you many times, like nobody plays like you. Like it's like it's really yeah, it's hard to find a xylophone player, but it's all <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find someone who really commits to playing the keys the way you do, you know? And uh Well because yeah. I'm gonna say something of that, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but mm. women have to work twice as hard for half the fucking credit. Oh, you're just <laughs> preaching to the choir right here. I just, you don't even know. I mean, like, I'm from Florida and I same. played in the... Oh, you're a Florida girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. We'll probably have, like, a lot of similar stories. And, um, yeah, and I, like, grew up in the punk and ska scene in Miami. And that was rough. That was a really rough time, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it makes you stronger and stuff. I will say that things are mm. like kind of kind of changing and kind of pushing forward now. And, you know, um, I think that for a long time I got a lot of, uh, you know, oh yeah, you're pretty good. Or like, oh, you should listen to so-and-so, you know, after the gig or like, you know what would be really great. And everybody loves to hear those comments after a show. Let me just tell you, like they love to hear that, you know, yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. So like my whole thing was like, I have to be really, really good at this instrument mm -hmm. um, so that no, you're not just pretty. You actually are a talented musician also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I just that is always my that my artistry and musicianship is like number one to me. Yeah. Well, you're seeing it more in, you know, mainstream music as well. Like Machine Gun Kelly just brought on a female guitar player. And she's yeah. and she's badass. hot. She's like up there with fucking pasties on, but she shreds. Yeah, it's badass. You know, and it's you're seeing the changes and it's like, well, is the music industry doing it for a gimmick? If they're doing it for a gimmick, whatever fucking gets our foot in the door is women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To make the, to make the change. It's time for the matriarchy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let's swing the pendulum just for a little bit and then we can, you know, even it out. We'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so you guys are actually, um, you're on a 19 date tour right now, direct supporting Gogo Bordello. So can yeah. we talk about this tour and how it's been, some of your worst moments, your favorite moments, challenges? Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. You know, like, I feel like 
obviously Gogo Bordeaux is a band that we all loved. Um, and uh, it's like a great fit. I think we're being, we're given the opportunity to play in front of the type of people that really resonate with our music, you know? And, you know, we've played with, we've toured with a lot of bands, you know? And, and I think, not to sound cocky, but like, I think we, we, we kind of fit in everywhere, but this is really like, I don't know, there's something really special about this tour where, where like, it just seems like the perfect storm. Um, and the band is just, everyone in the band is just so cool and so welcoming and supportive. And I, I think we've learned more in, in these two weeks on the road than probably any of the previous tours we've done, you know? Yeah, what are um, some things you've learned? Uh, being conservative with your energy. <laughs> Gil, Gil, Gil told us that day one. Gil is a bass player. Energy okay. Management. Energy management. Yesterday, these guys will tell you, I was asleep for 20 plus hours. Didn't move. I was just in bed the whole day mm -hmm. because I'm like going a thousand every night. And, uh, you know, that's not super smart to do, I guess. But, you know, these guys have been at it for for what like 20 20 plus years you know what i mean like they're they're veterans and they're they're gurus at, they're at this point you know so like learning from them has been great there's there really hasn't been any bad moments i don't yeah. know if you what you what y'all think i haven't experienced mm -hmm. a bad moment at all he, here's the thing like which i love about a gogo bordell and which i know we all relate to is like we're so grateful to be a part of this you know and i think sometimes it's easy for people to lose that gratefulness and that's where you where you start losing people that's where people start dropping off or you know get upset or, or or bail out but like if you if you have a grateful gratefulness for this lifestyle and this culture like i think you're gonna you're gonna be all right you know and we all have that and they totally have that and that's part of what has made this tour so fulfilling yeah and so fun yeah <clears throat> your your olive garden trip the other night <laughs> Hey, we gotta treat yourselves. You know what I mean. My sister gave me a twenty-five dollar gift, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar gift card to to Olive Garden, and we and we blew that. It's a lot of zeros. It's a lot of zeros. In one night, we blew that in one night. I did like the sign on your van that says "No Valuables." Yeah. <laughs> That's it be. a good way to not get your van broken into because you do hear that with with musicians touring it's like sometimes their vans get broken into yeah. and their shit gets stolen yeah yeah well, luckily we've been we've been uh pretty pretty safe thus far <laughs> <clears throat> Let's talk about your song Punk Rocker. You covered Iggy Pop's Punk Rocker. And he yes. actually talked about it on the radio and said he he first of all, he acknowledged it. He saw it. Mm -hmm. He spoke on it. He watched the music video for it. And he said that he actually likes it better than his because it's more dropped in, more real, is what he said. Yeah, that was an amazing moment. Uh we got an email on, while we were on that last tour, remember? The yep. six week tour with Days and Days. I pulled up on my phone. I'm like, the fuck is this? Got an email from Iggy Pop's manager, and it was a personal, it was a personal uh, letter from him. And just the greatest email I've ever gotten in my life, to, I'm pretty sure. Most of the, my emails are spam at this point anyway. So, like, <laughs> no, nah, I, 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 it, was, it was an amazing moment, you know? And, uh, I mean, every time we do a cover, our intention is to add to the legacy. I never will do a cover just to cover it. I always add my own lyrics. We put our own spin on it. And my hope is to, you know, add to the legacy of the song and, and hopefully, you know, like, please the, the artist or please, please the author. And this was one of those times where, where we actually got the validation and the verification from the man himself. And again, I just I all I can say is I'm just so grateful that 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 he approved and um Do you know who passed it along to him? Like how did he find it? I do. Somebody I, obviously showed it to him. I can't tell you that though. I, I can't. No. Can I? I don't know. Oh, I guess I can. <laughs> it's actually a weird it's yeah. a weird funny story. 
So I don't know if you know, um, th- you remember the TV show Pete and Pete? Yeah. You remember that? Okay, so yeah. Pete, Pete, I'm so, um, Danny, I hope I hope this is okay. <laughs> Shout out to Danny Tamborelli, um, if you're watching. So Danny Tamborelli is was Little Pete on Pete and Pete. He was also in. Do you guys even know this? No, yeah. I didn't know, I didn't you know this. Know this. I knew, I knew I, Pop was but like, do you know this that, story? That bird's father or whatever. Like Iggy, Iggy was on the show. Okay. So I guess backtrack. Was, I don't know this story. Danny Tamborelli. He was on Pete and Pete. He was also on All That. He was on. He was in Mighty Mighty Ducks. Ducks yeah. Right. Yeah. He's a Jersey boy, so we know him. With a name like that, of course he has to be. Yeah. <laughs> so. So he, we're boys with him. I think we played a show or two. I remembered that Iggy was on uh, Pete and Pete back in the day. So I just oh, hit yeah, up. He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was Michelle Trachtenberg's dad. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I hit him. I hit him up. I'm like, Yo, dude, check this song out. I think you might like it. He's like, Oh, I love it. It's rad. I'm like, Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. What do you think? You, th- you, you know how I could get this to Iggy Pop? Like, I know, I know you met him back in the day. And he's like, Yeah, no doubt. Here's this email. Um, I think he might have said, "Don't tell him I gave it to you." So once again, Danny, I am very sorry. <laughs> but uh, well, but it went well. It went well. So it it all worked out. It all worked out in the end. Shout out to Jounce. That's his band. Yeah. Um, I emailed his manager. I'm like, "Yo, blah blah blah. Do you could you possibly send this to Iggy? Like, who?" He said, "Yeah." He was like, "I'll send it to him." And then fired back like like an hour later with Iggy's response, and uh, we were crying tears of joy we're gonna link up with him in the dominican republic also with gogo bordello so yeah you're on that festival destination chaos coming up in the end of january early february yeah so so. have you is will that be your first time potentially meeting him in real life yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. what are you gonna say to him like what do you what do you want like you have you're gonna be thinking about it like what are you gonna when you get to meet him honestly I, I'm gonna em, I'm gonna embrace him with a hug. I hope I hope he accepts his leathery skin. His yeah, beautiful leathery <laughs> skin. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy is a huge inspiration to us. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it's like so amazing to even be acknowledged by these people. I mean, this is what this is what you you grow up dreaming about. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not like the money and 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 this and that is not really what's valuable here. It's like things like this, like hanging out with Eugene. Iggy Pop. I mean, we've met so many people that we grew up inspired by, and that's that's the most valuable. And of course, meeting kids and fans and stuff like that. You know. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, I'm so stoked to meet Iggy. So you I can't don't know wait. what he's gonna say yet. I have no clue. He's but. funny. I met him for the first time in 2014. It was backstage at a festival, and I was in the pinup contest. And um, the the producer of the festival he had told us um, that Iggy Pop helped pick the girls. And I yes. went up to him and I had my fucking sash on and mm-hmm. and I walk up and the first thing he says, he goes, whoa, you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Iggy Pop. I hope he thinks I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, oh, I said, you know, thank you so much for like helping choose me. And he he's like, I was like, they told me that you helped choose the girls. And he goes, that's a lie. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, OK, can I get a picture? And then he had his like glass of red wine and he was just there. And it was a very special moment of meeting a gig pop with his oh, leathery man. skin. I love it. <laughs> I See? love him so much. He's really funny. Uh, I'm, I, I can't wait. I, so. I, I respect that. He's, he's real. He's a real deal. I, I hope you have a very special story and he says something really funny to you. Me too. <laughs> uh, hell yeah. I mean, honestly, the goal, the goal is to perform with him. I'm just putting that out into the universe. Like, that would be the ultimate moment to have him come and sing with us on that song, you know? So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So that video was actually directed by um, Shibby Pictures, which his is it a is it a girl or a boy? Is Shibby a a boy, a man, a man, a man? Excuse me. <laughs> um, I never knew the the face behind Shibby Pictures, but I do know a lot of his work, and his work is stunning. Yeah. And he's actually done a lot of your videos now. Mm-hmm. How did you guys come together? Was it through your work with Days and Days because he works with them a lot? No, actually, that just was a coincidence. I think I I linked up with Shibby um, in the early days when we were still very much like playing DIY squats and, and parties. I think we played a, 
party of his before you were in the band. Yeah. And we filmed the music video on the beach and we all got arrested because uh, we were illegally setting fireworks off on the beach. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, we, we were friends for years and then eventually started working together. I love his I love his work, you know. He, he, he puts a lot of heart and soul into his videos. I think that video is probably our best that we've done with him yet, you know. Well, and was that one filmed the same day as East Side? Because they look the same. Actually, no. But that that's... <laughs> they look the same. It looks like you filmed it like it's yeah. like, hey, while we're here, let's just shoot. Two it's in actually a day. it's cool you say that because that was uh, intentional. It's supposed to be like the part two of Punk Rocker. Okay. And we filmed it almost a year exactly mm -hmm. yeah, from the day. A year apart. We are very cold in those videos. In Let it be known. Uh, <laughs> it was a cold, cold Jersey winter. <laughs> Um, yeah, shout out to Shibby though. He does a lot of great work. Um and uh we love him. So he's an he's an East Coaster also then. Is that how you He he's originally from Boston. Okay. And he travels all over the place. God knows where he lives at this point. He, he's, always, <laughs> he, he's always he's always traveling. Awesome. Well, so <clears throat> lastly, let's close with what's coming up next for you guys. Uh we're currently in the studio. Not currently right in this very moment but <laughs> well, yeah yes uh we're in the studio um working on a new album and it's it's uh probably like more than halfway done okay and uh we're really stoked on it like i said we're gonna play some new songs i'm i'm, I'm actually excited to see what you think about the two new ones we play okay um and uh yeah more touring you know like like you mentioned the dr is coming up um we'll probably do our own headlining tour and just kind of be open to you know, whatever whatever comes our way. Definitely. Are, are you recording this one with Pete from Bouncing Souls again? Yes, or? yes, yes. Cool. Um, yeah, we've already done most of the principal tracking for it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we got a lot done. Um, and we're going to finish it up when we get home and uh, release it in some in some fashion. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll do some NFTs. <laughs> Switch it up on y'all. <laughs> I don't know if those are still trendy. Are they still trendy? I don't know. They, they popped off for a minute and everybody thought they were going to get rich. So everyone hopped on yeah. them and then they realized it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Honestly, on, on some real shit, though, we are going to do vinyl again because yeah. we haven't done a vinyl in a minute. Uh, are you and, done with the cassette tapes now? Or are you still doing those? No, you know what? We're selling cassettes <laughs> on this tour and people 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 mess with them. People like them. So, OK, yeah, yeah. More new music coming and more touring. Um, you might see me on OnlyFans, possibly. <laughs> Don't watch that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to close with that and say thank you guys so much for taking the time tonight. Thank you, Aaron. We yeah. love you. We're crazy, crazy in the brains, brains and you're watching Last Rockers TV. TV.